Now we're going to look at non-dimensionalizing uh, an equation. And uh, we're going to start with uh, a simple one, and then we're going to look at a more complicated one. So our simple one is dn dt equals um, rn. Okay. The variables are n and t, and the parameters are r. We're going to non-dimensionalize uh, the variables first. And to do that, we're going to let x equal n over n naught and tau equal t over t. Um, so n is a population, n naught is also a population. We don't know what this number is. But we know that if we divide a population by a population, we get something unitless. And um, t is a time, and capital T is some kind of time constant. So t over capital T is also unitless. So um, n equals x n naught, and t equals tau t. So our initial equation was dn dt equals rn, and we can substitute these in, so we have dxn naught over d tau t uh, is equal to r um, x n naught. And um, we can pull constants out of a derivative, so this is n naught over t dx d tau is equal to r um, x n naught. So uh, these n naughts cancel, and we find uh, dx d tau equals r t x. Looking through this equation, x is dimensionless, tau is dimensionless, x is dimensionless, and r t is a dimensionless group. So r t is dimensionless. T and n naught were arbitrary. We can choose the time scale to be 1 over r to simplify this problem, and that gives us dx d tau equals x as our final differential equation. What does this mean? Um, it means that whatever the role of this r was, uh, it's just a scaling factor, and we were able to get rid of it by choosing a different scaling of our variables. So this is the non-dimensional equation that corresponded to this dimensional equation, and this is uh, really, like in some sense, the appropriate description of the behavior of the equation. Um, if we want to return to this dimensional information, we would just need to solve this and then rescale everything to learn what the dimensional version was doing. So now we'll look at another example. This is an equation that is describing the motion, um, the angle at which a bead sits on a spinning hoop, where the hoop is spinning at a rate given by omega and the hoop has a radius of r, and I think the bead probably has a mass of m, but the physical details of the problem are not important to us, we're just going to figure out how to non-dimensionalize. And so the first thing we want to do is identify the variables, and these are theta and um, t, and then the parameters. These are m, r, b, g, and omega. And uh, I want to note that theta is already non-dimensional, so when we create non-dimensional variables, which is the first thing we do, um, we're going to get theta and tau equals t over t, which implies t equals tau t. And uh, we're going to go ahead and plug that in.
So um, m r d squared theta d little t squared, but little t becomes tau t um, plus b uh, d theta d tau t uh, plus Okay, the other terms don't change because um, theta hasn't changed and, there and there's no time in them. So minus m r omega squared cosine of theta sine of theta equals zero. So we're going to sort this out. We have m r over t squared d squared theta d tau squared plus uh, b over t, d theta, d tau, plus our other two terms, equals zero. d squared theta d tau squared is now a unitless uh, quotient, and d theta d tau is also unitless. And um, thanks to the dimensional compatibility of all the different terms in the equation, I'm going to multiply through by t squared over mr, and that's that's going to turn this term into something non-dimensional, and everything else will become non-dimensional too. So I get um, d squared theta d tau squared plus b t over m r uh, d theta d tau plus um, g t squared over r sine theta uh, minus omega squared t squared uh, cos theta sine theta is equal to zero. Uh, and now note that every single term is now non-dimensional. That means that we have a bunch of non-dimensional groups. bt over mr is a non-dimensional group, gt squared over r is a non-dimensional group, and omega squared t squared is a non-dimensional group. I'm going to write these down. So b t squared over m r has no dimension, it has dimensions of 1, g t squared over r, and omega t, the quantity squared. All of these are dimensionless, and so, um, let's see, uh, g and r and m and b and omega are all set by the problem, but t is arbitrary. We actually have some choices for t. If we, oh, I made a mistake here, there's no squared. Um, if I set t equal to m r over b, then this thing would be 1. And if I set t equal to the square root of r over g, then this thing would be 1. And if I set t equal to 1 over omega, then this thing will be 1. These are three different time scales. These are all three different values of capital T. And, um, it doesn't matter which I choose, this is all algebraic manipulation, but I can just choose one of them arbitrarily and say, wait a sec, I want to define capital T to be one of these things, and that will eliminate one of these groups. And I'm just, uh, it's com most convenient to define it this way. We could do it differently, um, and we will get the same results no matter what we choose for capital T, but I would choose this one because it's the simplest expression. So uh, let t equal 1 over omega, um, let beta equal b um, over m r omega, and let gamma equal g over r omega squared. And now I'm going to rewrite the equation um, using these new dimensionless groups. So the equation becomes theta double dot, where now the double dot is denoting with respect to tau, plus beta theta dot, plus gamma sine theta, plus, oh, that's a minus, minus cosine theta sine theta equals zero. Uh, this equation will have the exact same behavior as our much more complicated uh, equation, or as the fully dimensional equation that we started with, but now we can see what the natural parameters of this equation are. Before, if we um, if we uh, adjusted m, or if we adjusted b, it seemed like we were adjusting different things,
But now we can see that what actually matters is the ratio of b over m, and so adjusting either one of them can create the same result. So it's possible to go between the results of this non-dimensional equation and the results of the dimensional equation by reversing all of the algebra we did, and this non-dimensional equation is the right one to analyze because the parameters that are left in this non-dimensional equation are the real parameters of this system. I told you that this was a little bit arbitrary, that we could have had a beta here and say an alpha over here and set this to one, or we could have had this be one and had a gamma and an alpha. Well, evidently, uh, those are all algebraically equivalent and those would all give us the same dynamics from this equation. So in this way, uh, non-dimensionalizing non equation, an equation is really amazing because the thing that we're left with is straightforward to analyze. One final comment, how can you tell if an equation is dimensional or non-dimensional? Well, if you're given an equation of this form, um, there's a length over time on this side and a length squared on this side, and so you know there's a problem. The only way this equation would make sense if it was, was non-dimensional. Well, if you were given an equation x dot equals alpha x squared, where you don't know anything about alpha, it's now possible that this is a dimensional equation um, because alpha could be in units of 1 over lt. So sometimes it's obvious that an equation must be non-dimensional for uh, it to make sense, and then sometimes it's not clear at all whether it's dimensional or non-dimensional, and then sometimes it will be very explicit in the problem that you're being given something non-dimensional.